Hi and welcome. This is JJ Walsh and this is Seek Sustainable Japan podcast. 10 great sustainable workplace strategies uh, with James Hollow. I had a chance to go to Tokyo this month and catch up with CEO of Fabric. Uh, they do sustainability focused consulting for corporate and small businesses. And I just followed him around his office and he showed me 10 really interesting and very effective strategies that they have put into place in their offices there, which is part of their community engagement, raising awareness, but also things that his staff are very excited and passionate about to try out. And then they are able to use that knowledge uh, in their consulting work uh, with businesses. So many of us are trying out sustainable strategies at home, but it's rare to find a business that has so many innovative tactics in place. On a recent trip to Tokyo, I had the chance to meet up with James Hollow at his sustainability-focused consultancy in the cool area of Nakameguro, where their offices are built directly into the foundation of the train line above. James has been a guest on my talk show podcast, Seek Sustainable Japan, to talk about how Japanese consumers think about sustainable brands and more insights uh, from their research that projects that they've done in 2022 and a follow-up again in 2023 to update the discussion after a follow-up research which showed trends as things are developing uh, although small, they are developing, he says. Uh, they have calculated and uh, documented these trends over three years now. Now, so much of what James is putting into place at his office can be an inspiration for others struggling to see how they can reduce waste or encourage a circular mindset among staff. I hope sharing these ideas will spark new ideas for you. Uh, please add your comments below or get in touch uh, JJ Walsh on social media or inbound ambassador asked why he started putting these sustainable strategies into action at the workplace it sounds like it started with discussions with his team James and his staff have a great curiosity in possibilities this led them to try out different circular economy strategies to learn the ups and downs of these strategies from experience, which they can then apply uh, to their consulting work and give firsthand knowledge uh, when they're uh, advising that these strategies be taken on by the businesses and the managers that they're talking to. The first strategy, uh, free market. So James had set up a free market in front of his office where people could take and reuse items that him and his staff didn't need anymore. Uh, there were some folders from his kids' uh, school that they didn't need anymore. There were boxes and bottles. Um, there is a great culture of uh, Mujin unmanned shops, honesty shops around, along roadsides in Japan. And this kind of connects well with this idea in terms of community building. James said he was surprised by what kinds of things people took. Almost everything has been taken, he said. Uh, in the second point, he said it's really important to understand your why for setting up sustainable strategy. Before you take on these strategies, it's important to be clear about the why of setting up sustainable strategies in your workplace and communicate it clearly to your team in order to walk the talk. He also said many times about many of the ideas coming from his team and uh, he wanted to support their passion to try these things out. Uh, number three, refill. So he has a section of BYOB, bring your own bottle and refill. Set up a refill and reuse for zero waste lifestyle and work style through a circular living station. I would love to have access to refillable laundry detergent, cleaning fluid, shampoo and soap anywhere in Japan, especially 
if it's at work like this, it would be so convenient. So he has uh, big uh, containers in the back, which they uh, get in bulk. And then his staff can bring in their own containers and refill them. Or they have some old containers other people didn't need, which are below. Um, so they can reuse those containers as well. Number four, reusable takeout collaboration with local eateries. Uh, Fabric is joining a collaboration project called Meglo. It's an organization based in Tokyo. They started in Kamakura and they set up these reusable takeout container systems um, in different parts of Tokyo. And I would love to see this in more areas of Japan. I often have a dream when I travel by Shinkansen train uh, that wouldn't it be great to have all the Shinkansen bento boxes in reusable containers. Everybody's getting them from the stations, eating them on the train, and then putting the waste on in the train or at the platforms. So why not have the reusable bento boxes uh, like this Meglo program? Oh, what a great idea. I would love to see this happen. Um, so they have a container, like a cardboard uh, deposit box set up in their office for a connection with Meglu. And uh, they have these reusable uh, containers, like uh, Tupperware containers. And they take it to uh, some of the eateries around the town, which have also signed up with the system and they can get their takeout food in these containers. When they're finished eating it, they drop the cleaned container in these uh, boxes and the staff from Meglu come around and pick it up. And then the system continues and reuses over and over again. So a very circular economy, circular system. Uh, number five, go beyond compliance in your recycle station. So most workplaces have a recycle station, but most are limited to the two standard bins. You see PET, uh, plastic uh, drink bottles, glass, aluminum, drink containers, or all the other is usually just as burnable. So it's usually recyclables or burnable, uh, just two containers. Um, but here James was showing me how in contrast, uh, at their workplace at Fabric, they have set up a recycle station that goes well beyond this compliance uh, to build an understanding of what is actually recyclable. And they even collect things like toothbrushes and uh, Tetra packs, uh, which are those insulated uh, packs that some yogurts and uh, juices and smoothies and things come in and really figuring out if more things are recyclable and following that recycle system around uh, Japan and really trying to connect with waste management uh, systems as well as uh, the staff who work there and figuring out what you could recycle more. And number six, use a compost bag to deal with food waste. Uh, he said many times how the culture, the work culture at Fabric is very focused on uh, get togethers, which include eating and drinking and uh, relaxing and talking. And so he said, when work culture includes food and entertaining, you need to deal with the hurdle of food waste. Fabric actually has two tactics to put food waste back into good reuse. The first strategy is to use a compost bag subscription system called LFC, which is in collaboration with a local farm uh, in the Tokyo area, which they source a monthly uh, subscription box of fresh organic vegetables. And so the farmers can easily pick up their compost and reuse it on their farm. Um, but you can also sign up for a pickup system with the LFC Life Food Cycle organization directly if you don't have a connection uh, to a farm. So this is a great system. Even if you live in a, an apartment building or like their businesses are not near a garden or they don't have a garden area to dig in the compost, 
So having a life food cycle bag uh, that doesn't smell and you can keep your food waste and kitchen waste in there, it really makes a big difference. Another uh, system they're using is a worm farm. Worm farms are fabulous ways to deal with food waste and create black gold compost soil that your office plants and garden will love. Even uh, plants in planter pots, you can use this black soil and they'll grow really healthy, be really happy. Uh, the worms are also regenerative, so you can share some uh, with other people who visit your office and James said he has done this many times. He's given about half the worms uh, to people who wanted to start worm composting at their house or business and they immediately or within a few weeks grow back to the same size. So they are very regenerative and a really healthy ecosystem within your office. Uh, James credited Byron Nagy and Cowdy Nagy, who have a permaculture farm uh, not too far from Tokyo. They moved to the rural area, and Byron came over. Uh, he's a permaculture specialist and organic farmer, and he came to their office and helped them set up their three-tier worm farm. And I had the pleasure of talking with Byron and Kaori on my show, Seek Sustainable Japan. I uh, interviewed them about their transition from urban life to rural life and uh, raising animals and trying to make a business from selling their organic produce online during COVID. And that was a great discussion. I'll put the link below. Number seven, growing interesting plants for a green curtain for shade and helps you engage with the community. So James was talking about growing plants for shade outside the windows that get the hottest. And it also creates a sense of health and happiness. And the neighbors uh, who live nearby are also really happy uh, to see the plants beautify the area, as well as eager to get involved with the harvesting especially when it's an interesting plant, uh, like they are growing. They're growing hejima, which is like a loofah, a Japanese scrubber plant, which makes a beautiful shady green curtain over the window in summer, but also creates this kind of loofah fruit uh, that can be used as a sustainable scrubber for cleaning. I have never heard of anyone eating it, so I guess you just use it as a scrubber. Um, but it's really nice that you can grow your own cleaning materials, isn't it? Uh, number eight, local culture in action. James showed me how they have a kombucha fermentation scoby area and kintsugi in a section of the kitchen for a team that loves to get together and eat and drink, inviting people to share in the fermentation of the kombucha and learn how to repair broken pottery with kintsugi is a really fun idea that builds community and workplace culture. Number nine, repair and cleaning section. Creating an opportunity to repair and use your favorite products longer is exciting in Japan where motainai culture is embedded as part of the culture. Um, most people understand the word motainai, but actually, which means don't waste or reuse as much as possible, but actually trying to find ways to put that into action with products that you use, trying to extend the life of the product in repair it or clean it, use it longer, instead of just replacing it, buying a new one and getting rid of it. Fabric set up this section to repair, reuse, and use products longer in order to reduce unnecessary buying and waste. This started as a research project they were doing for a consulting job with Panasonic. So isn't it great to hear of companies beside Patagonia who have a repair station in their businesses and shops? Number 10, the final idea he showed me, he said was actually the first idea they implemented uh, when they started their business. Number 10, creating a community library as a sustainable strategy which builds knowledge and a sense of community by sharing great ideas among staff and their wider network. 
It's used to have a great workplace reference source that's not just online, following up readings by being able to discuss things on a deeper level with staff and clients and people who visit their offices. So what do you think? Do you have a favorite strategy or think something was impossible for your situation? Why? I'd love to hear your point of view. Big thanks to James Hollow for sharing all these key strategies and insights with us. I was really impressed with how much they're putting into action and I hope uh, it can inspire you to try some of these out. I've certainly been thinking more of a worm farm and how I can incorporate more of my compost waste and uh, put it back to use. But also, I love that idea of the reusable containers, even within my community or my uh, business network. How can I help establish or set up those kinds of systems? Thanks again for listening. I hope you have a great day and see you next time. I'll let you